All right, so today we're going to take a look at uh, Synapse Serverless and the impact of how data is stored on both the performance of your queries and the cost of your Synapse Serverless implementation. Uh, I'll take, take a brief look at how we've set up Synapse Serverless to query files in Azure Data Lake Storage. And, and then we'll compare some uh, different options of how you query the data in Synapse Serverless. Um, and uh, you know how those different options for storing your data impact uh, performance, the amount of data read. So Synapse Serverless charges by the amount of data processed uh, when you run these serverless queries. So uh, it's, it's really important to minimize the amount of data uh, that's read for each query, uh, and managing how you stored your data has direct implications to that. So let's, let's take a look at ADLS first. So I've got Azure Data Explorer here, and we're going to take a look at the New York Taxi data set. Uh, I've just got a, a, a subset of that data to use for our example. Uh, let's take a look at this first uh, folder here, CSVs. I've stored the CSVs for the uh, New York Taxi trip data, and uh, you can see that each folder here underneath the yellow taxis is segmented or partitioned by year. Um, so the format of this folder is really important here, and we'll see why in a little bit. So we see year equals 2019, and you dive into that, you get one folder for each month. And similarly, you say month equals uh, 0, 01 for January, so forth, so on. And inside that you have, uh, in this case, a single CSV file for, for that month. These are what's known as partitions. So we've partitioned the data by year and by month. Um, this is just for illustrative purposes. Uh, these uh, folder paths we'll see in a little bit are used to filter the data as you query in run a query in Synapse Serverless. Um, choosing your partition criteria um, uh, shouldn't be done in a vacuum. It's not arbitrary. Uh, you want to look for the usage patterns of your data. So you'll want to create your partition strategy, uh, your folder structure, uh, with a couple of things in, in mind. So one will be the frequency of those fields that you're partitioning by and how their frequency and use of, uh, you know, in join conditions, group uh, by conditions, uh, where clauses. So this is how Synapse is going to ultimately filter out which files it's using uh, or, or going to, to select out of your data lake for the query. Um, you also want to avoid skew. So uh, what skew is, is uh, each file really should be roughly the same size, if, if at all possible. You're, you're trying to uh, spread that work out across the nodes that are doing the, the data processing evenly. Uh, if you have small files in, in some folders and very large files in others, um, that doesn't distribute the data across that, that processing, across that compute evenly. Uh, so you want to minimize the skew and you want to look for patterns of frequently used uh, criteria for your, for your folder structure. So the target file size, uh, according to Synapse uh, serverless documentation is going to be somewhere around 100 megabytes to 10 gigabytes per file. So as we look at one of these files, we want to target somewhere between 100 meg and, and 10 gig. Um, slightly smaller, slightly larger is not going to, not going to hugely impact your, your data. Now, I would try and target that sweet spot somewhere uh, really even more fine-tuned if you can get it 200 uh, megabytes to five gigabytes is going to be a really good target. Slightly smaller, slightly larger will be uh, will be just fine. Also consider the file format that you're storing the data in. So in this case, we've got CSV. A preferred option would be parquet files, and we'll, we'll look at the impact of parquet files in a little bit. Um, this is uh, going to greatly impact how your data is processed by Synapse Serverless. So parquet files are um, a columnar data store. Um, they also have strong data types, uh, which is also going to uh, aid in your query performance. Um, and it takes advantage of compression as well. Uh, so when you're, you're making these choices, it's going to be important to understand the processing time to you know compress the data, upload the data, transfer that from your, say, your on-prem data source or other cloud data source um, 
and, and how long it takes to transfer that file into a, your ADLS uh, account or storage account, compression will some significantly reduce that transfer time. Let's take a quick look at the different file formats and their respective sizes. So this is a CSV file. We can see this one file here for uh, January of 2019 is 800 meg. Let's take a look and see what the same file in, uh, in Parquet looks like. So this is again 2019, we're looking at January, and you can see that it's uh, only 264 meg, so just a little over a quarter of the size. Uh, so that makes it gonna make a significant difference in how long it takes to transfer this data. So let's take a look at how we set up uh, our Synapse serverless to read ADLS. So we have first create our master encryption key, um, and then we create a database scoped credential for uh, our managed identity. In this case, we're gonna use the, the, the MSI for our Synapse instance for authentication. Um, so this is the, the, the keyword to do that. So um, there, there may be other identities you wanna use, a service principal, uh, user-defined user identity, um, service count, uh, those all have different syntax, but in this case, we're just going to use a managed identity. And then make sure that your Synapse managed identity has access to your Synap your your ADLS account by giving it the storage blob data contributor role in your ADLS instance. Um, and then the last thing we'll do for setup is create an external data source. So the location is going to be the URL for your storage account. It's just going to be your storage account name .dfs core.windows.net, and then the path to the container that your data resides in. So in this case, it's just called data. Uh, and then the credential is the one that we named up here, workspace identity. That's how the data source knows how to connect to ADLS. And finally, we're going to create some views. So um, in this case, we're using a, uh, a technique in creating the view uh, called open row set. Um, in this case, we're, we're telling the open row set what path to go through inside of the container we defined in our data source. So we have our New York taxi. This one's going to be CSV. Uh, and then the year and month have uh, a pattern match for stars. And then any CSV file that resides in that path. So this tells Synapse that go look in the yellow folder and uh, select any year, any month, and any file in those folders. You can change this um, if you wanted to target a specific year. You could uh, remove the wildcard and, and plug in a specific year or a, a wildcard. So you, you wanted only 2000 forward, you could put 20 star. So th the next thing we'll look at is uh, asking what data source uh, in Synapse, what, what object is going to use to, to access this data. So, so this is our external data source we created earlier. Uh, what format is the file? In this case, it's CSV. And we're going to tell it the, the first row to process is two. Uh, this is a, a, a feature of the version one parser, which is the, the one chosen by default. And we'll talk about the difference between the parser version here in a minute. But in parser one, you'll tell it first row uh, is going to be two if your file has a header row. Uh, and then you define the, the columns in your file. Um, in this case, we're just going to say varcar for all of them. Um, and there is some impact of, of how that uh, affects your processing. We'll, we'll, we'll see that in another view. So one important thing to point out in this view is that uh, we're using a uh, built-in function called file path. And this tells Synapse what folder path um, is currently selected um, and we're, we're passing in the parameter of the location of the wildcard pattern. So this is the first location of the wildcard pattern here. That's going to be the year. The second location of the wildcard is the month. So we're going to use those in our queries here in a little bit. When you're using this file path, you're telling Synapse Serverless where to go to find the data as, as, as part of your query. Uh, this is how Synapse knows the, uh, to prune these partitions and only go after the folders that are relevant for your query. And so we'll see in a little bit um, how that impacts the query performance, the amount of data read. We'll create a second view here. This is uh, optimized for query performance. Um, we're defining uh, the view very uh, similarly to the one before, the, the same uh, path in our 
in our structure in our, our ADLS folder structure here, the same data source. It's also CSV. Um, we're using the parser version 2.0, um, which is a, a new version of the parser for uh, for Synapse Serverless, and uh, this has some impact on your data amount of data processed and the features used. So in this case, for example, we're we're going to say header row equals true. This is only available in the parser version 2.0. And the other thing we're going to do is uh, strongly define what data types uh, with the minimum amount of, uh, fi of, of sizes for each of these char 1, var car 30, as opposed to 200 or something like that. And then we're explicitly defining the, the numeric data types as well. So doing this is going to reduce the amount of processing time uh, incurred by your, by your serverless query. Uh, and the last one we'll create here is a parquet file. Um, notice the only uh, significant difference here is that we're telling it that it is a, a parquet as opposed to CSV. Everything else here is pretty much the same, and we don't have to say that there's a header row either. Um, the data, data types here are the same ones that we saw before, um, and, and because parquet uh, internally defines these as strong data types, um, we, we get, to get a little bit of processing lift there as well. Parquet files also uh, can benefit not only from the partition pruning, uh, it also, because it's a columnar data store, it also takes advantage of something called columnar pruning. So when you run a query, it only reads the columns that are defined in your query and ignores all the other columns. Um, this is not the case for CSVs. CSVs are flat um, and it reads this data row by row. Um, so you'll, you'll see the impact on performance and the amount of data processed as we test out these queries. So one of the reasons we're using views as opposed to uh, creating an external table is because currently Synapse Serverless uh, doesn't support the partitioning of data in creating external tables. So when you create an external table, it creates a folder structure in your ADLS account. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we define an external table, um, we can see that all of the files uh, are in a single folder. And so we, we don't get to take advantage of the partition pruning that, uh, that we would if we selected a, a, a partition pattern uh, by year or month or, or some other criteria. So let's take a look at our first query here. Um, so this first query uh, ignores the file path um, uh, year and month uh, attributes we we created on our view so year and month here defined as this uh, this this file path um, so what we're doing in this query is we're illustrating what the amount of data read uh, is whenever you don't use these folder paths so uh, let's let's take a look at what this looks like we're just simply converting uh, a date field uh, and we're saying give me the year for that date field uh, and then the month for the date field. So now it's going to go off and it's going to scan the ADLS directory uh, that our data source points to, the, the entire container, and it's going to filter out um, based on this date field. Uh, and we can see uh, how long that takes and how much data it reads. All right, so that took just about a minute. Um, we can see the, the results here, we have vendor ID and the total fares uh, included in those for those vendors. And let's take a look at the messages here. So the, the important thing we want to notice here is the amount of data read. So total amount of data scanned looks like right around 12 and a half gigabytes. So let's take a look at how this works if we were to use the folders uh, themselves and you take advantage of that partition pruning, the folder paths. So let's take a look at this query. Um, this is roughly the same uh, query, except for the fact that we're using the month and year fields in our view as opposed to the date field. So we'll take a look at this one. All right, so this one took right around 21 seconds. Um, and the important thing to note here is that we only scanned uh, 800 megabytes. So if you remember, that was the size of our CSV file. We take a look at uh, January in uh, 2019. We can see this uh, slightly more red, but uh, but roughly we're 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 talking about the 800 megabytes for the individual file, as opposed to scanning the entire container and uh, 
and incurring all the cost involved with scanning the entire container. Um, so now let's take a look at the query performance. So this this takes advantage of this is previous query takes advantage of partition pruning, uh, where the first one did not. Uh, let's take a look at reading this data using the the 2.0 parser, the strong data types. We're still using the year and month as our our uh, filter parameters is going to take advantage of that folder paths uh, partition schema that we created. Uh, so let's take a look at how long this takes to run. All right, so right about 12 seconds. Um, so that's half the time of the previous query. So the parser version 2.0 is doing its job of optimizing our query performance, but also look at the amount of data read. So now we're roughly double the amount of data read because the parser 2.0 reads a little bit of data ahead and a little bit of data after your where clause or your part, your uh, in your, your partition strategy. So it's doing a little bit of extra read um, to to improve performance, but it's it's um, uh, going to overall increase the amount of data read, uh, which does impact your uh, your, your cost for your Synapse service queries. So let's take a look at the uh, parquet file format now. So now we're going to take advantage of not only the partition pruning, but we're also getting the, the column pruning uh, that the uh, only the parquet file gives you. So now we're, we're looking at about seven seconds to return the same query. Um, the message here, we only scanned 43 megabytes, and those are the columns that we used for the, the select, the sum, and the it had, had of course, has to read the, the where and group by fields as well. Um, so you can see there's significantly less data read by this query as opposed to the other two. Um, so now let's take a look at what an external table looks like. Um, you know, we, there are some things, tricks you can do with external tables as you can't with a view, so creating statistics and, and whatnot that, that may uh, aid in performance. Um, but we're using the same year and month fields, uh, you know, they're, they're defined differently, of course, because the the external table does not support the partition pruning uh, the folder path function that we used in the views. Um, but uh, let's take a look at what this query looks like. All right. So right at about 44 seconds. Uh, so not too bad from a performance standpoint. But you can see uh, we're reading uh, practically the entire uh, container here. This is all of the data for the yellow taxi. Is if you remember our folder structure here, if we look at our uh, external tables, remember that all the files uh, for this this data set are in one folder. So performance is probably acceptable, um, but it's going to incur more cost than if you were to read from a, a parquet file that's been partitioned appropriately. So I hope you found this interesting. Uh, hope it can give you a little bit of guidance in managing your uh, cost and performance of your Synapse serverless instance. Thanks for joining us.